Microsoft are now giving everyone access to Microsoft Copilot free of charge. Nothing to pay, nada. And that is prompting a lot of my clients to ask me, hey Matt, is this actually safe to use? And that's great because that means people are becoming more aware about the potential data security and privacy risks using AI products. So there is still a paid version of Microsoft 365 Copilot, and it does give you a whole bunch of extra functionality. It allows you to leverage your organization's data for its output. But is the free version safe to use? Does the paid version offer any security that the free version doesn't use? I'll be answering that, and I'm also gonna be revealing somewhere that Microsoft is sending some of your Copilot data, and most people are completely clueless about it. So the free version of Microsoft Copilot or Microsoft Copilot Chat, it's kind of like hiring a temp for the day and not giving them any access to your data. So they're not gonna have access to your emails, they're not gonna have access to your your SharePoint information, and they're not gonna have access to your team's information. So that is gonna limit to an extent how much they can actually help you. Whereas the paid version of Microsoft 365 Copilot is like hiring a full-time assistant that you've given access to your mailbox, to your SharePoint files, and to your Microsoft Teams account so that your assistant can help you in a better way. They've got access to your data, they can use that data to help you stay organized and to generate content. That is the key difference between the free and the paid version. But what about data security and privacy? So let's start by talking about something which Microsoft calls Enterprise Data Protection or EDP. What actually is that? Well, they include it in both the free and the paid versions of Microsoft Copilot. And it's not really a security product or a security feature. It's more a set of controls and promises about security and privacy that Microsoft will offer you for your data. So firstly, let's talk about data isolation. Microsoft promises that your data will be isolated from other people's data. And what they mean by that is the data that you input into Microsoft Copilot will not be accessible to anybody else. So if you're using the Microsoft 365 business product rather than the consumer product, let's talk about your Microsoft 365 tenant, which is your customer environment, your company's collection of Microsoft 365 data. The data you put into Copilot in Microsoft 365 Business does not leave your Microsoft 365 tenant or customer environment. Actually, that's not entirely true. Some of the data, some of the information that you put into Copilot is actually sent somewhere outside of that. And a lot of people don't realize that. We're gonna talk about this a little bit later in the video. In terms of data encryption, these days we kind of assume that all data in the cloud is encrypted in motion, which means when it's moving from one point to another, such as from your computer up to the cloud, there's an encrypted tunnel around that data so that people cannot intercept it and at rest, i.e. where it sits in the cloud, on those cloud servers. So whilst generally that is the case with most cloud services, you should never assume it. You should never assume anything when it comes to cybersecurity. You need to ask those questions, but good news, Microsoft does encrypt your data when it comes to Microsoft Copilot. They also provide something that they call rigorous physical security controls. They don't really go into much detail about what that actually is. I'm sure there's some page deep on the internet where there might be more information about it. If anyone's got it, drop it in the comments. I couldn't find it, but I guess you'll have to take their word for it that they are rigorous physical security controls. The next point, and it's a really important point, is that your data is not used. What they mean by that is when you input information to Copilot, it doesn't use that information to train its large language models. And losing the jargon effectively, that means it's not using your information to train itself to better the experience for other users. A lot of AI platforms do do this, so you really do need to be asking those questions and finding out. Because if you're putting sensitive information into an AI platform and it's then used that information to help other people, that's a problem. So big question, do you get any extra security with the paid version of Microsoft 365 Copilot? Now, it's important to understand that there's a whole bunch of different 
Microsoft Copilot products. The most commonly used one is Microsoft 365 Copilot. So that's one we're really talking about today. So it does kind of offer some extra security, but not really. The extra security it gives you is that it leverages your organization's existing security controls and user permissions. It's not going to give people access to data that they don't already have access to, or will it? Let's think about this example. Let's say John in the sales team has access to the HR folder. He really shouldn't have access to the HR folder. He's got no idea that he's got access to the HR folder uh, because he doesn't go snooping. He knows that there's an audit trail of all activity in SharePoint. And to be honest, he's got no real desire to lose his job or to go looking at that HR data anyway. You now give him a Microsoft 365 Copilot license and he says, hey, Copilot, tell me some information about our CEO. That then reveals, using data from the HR SharePoint site, that the CEO has just had a 200% pay rise in a year that everybody else had a pay freeze. Awkward, that's not gonna go down well, is it? So you really do need to think about the permissions of your data and get your data ready before you start using these AI tools. If you're using SharePoint as an example, you need to do a thorough top to bottom review of your permissions and think about using things like information protection labels in Microsoft 365 to help you combat this. As a minimum though, at least focus on those sensitive areas like finance and HR, don't get it wrong. And it's not just about data confidentiality, integrity is also incredibly important. What I mean by that is let's say you've got a whole bunch of old versions of files in SharePoint, maybe you're not using the SharePoint versioning properly and you've saved multiple versions of a file, or you've got these archive folders in your SharePoint sites with a bunch of old information there about your terms or products or whatever else. If you ask Copilot a question and you're leveraging your organization's data, it's gonna use files like that. It's not gonna understand that that's an old version of the file. So you need to do a clear out, you need to separate your archive data somewhere else, and you need to make sure that only relevant information is being used to generate responses in Microsoft Copilot. Make sure you get your data ready before you use any AI product, whether it's Microsoft or something else. It's so important. Okay, so I've been hinting about this mysterious place that Microsoft is sending some of your Copilot data. It's not that scary, but you do need to think about it. So whether you're using the paid or the free version of Microsoft Copilot, if you're using the web search, if you're getting information from the web, it will send some of that information to its Bing search engine to help find the right answer for you. It's not gonna send your whole document that you upload. It's not necessarily gonna send your whole search query. In fact, in most cases, it will not. It's only gonna pick out a couple of keywords that it thinks are necessary and send that to the search engine. So if you look at Microsoft's security and privacy page on Copilot, um, it will actually give you an example, which something along the lines of, hey, we're looking to acquire this business called Fabricam. We'd like to know more information about its financials and business strategy. Can you help? So rather than sending off to Bing that you're looking to acquire this company, which probably is a bit sensitive, it's just going to pick out a couple of keywords like Fabricam, financials and strategy and send that to Bing. So that's probably not such an issue. And if you were looking to buy a company, to be honest, you were probably gonna search that kind of stuff in a search engine anyway. Now the general public cannot see what people are searching into search engines. Although when masses and masses, you know, talking hundreds of thousands, millions of people are searching for stuff in these search engines, it will start to identify trends in what people are searching for. So maybe if you're a massive enterprise and you think all your staff are gonna be searching something that's super sensitive, maybe that's some kind of consideration, um, but otherwise generally the data that you send to Bing, it's just gonna be a few keywords and generally the public will not get that information. You do need to think about it, especially if you are something like an FBI agent. 